Welcome to MS Learn Online. I'm Kate Milliken. Swallowing is something that we usually don't even think about. But for some people with MS, the simple act of swallowing can be a problem. Patricia Bednarik, a speech-language pathologist at the University of Pittsburgh, joins us to talk about the swallowing problems that some people with MS may experience. We think of swallowing as a simple act, yet the act of swallowing consists of multiple phases. Pat, why don't we start with what the phases are? Okay, well, there are many phases of swallowing. The oral preparatory stage is the stage where it's before we even get food into our mouths, and that is how food is presented. And that is where our body is actually getting ready to receive food. So it deals with the psychological aspect of anticipation, getting ready. The saliva actually will start flowing upon looking at food. Um, our gastric juices in our stomach will start to um, be produced and we are already anticipating, hopefully um, with pleasure, that we're going to be eating. And this stage is very, very important, particularly for those people who may be on modified diets. Uh, the next stage of the swallow is the oral stage of the swallow, where the food is actually brought up and put into the mouth. And this involves the chewing stage. And during this stage is where the tongue and the teeth, of course, are working together to grind up the food, mix it with saliva, um, break it down into smaller pieces so that it's easier to swallow. Um, this is where the tongue needs to be able to move around. The cheeks and the lips need to have really good muscle tone because otherwise you will get pocketing in the cheeks. Um, under the tongue, there may, may be some food that gets left on the tongue um, when we get ready to swallow. The next stage, as the food moves over the back of the tongue, we are now starting to go into the next stage of the swallow, which is called the pharyngeal swallow, okay, or the, or the swallow of the throat, okay. In this stage, to make it very simple, um, what happens in the throat part of the swallow, or the pharyngeal stage, is the food starts going over the back of the tongue down the throat. The soft palate, um, which has that little uvula in the back of your throat, that raises up and, and blocks off the back of your throat so that the food doesn't come out your nose, okay? And it redirects the food down the back of your throat. At the same time, the tongue is coming up and pushing against the back of your throat to help push that food down. As the food is coming down, your voice box or your larynx is moving up and forward and there's a structure in your throat called the epiglottis and you can't see it from the outside, which is a good thing, um, but it actually is moving down over your windpipe or your trachea to help close that off so that food um, is, is not going to go in there so the food will hit it and be deflected. Underneath the epiglottis, as everything's being pulled up and forward, your vocal cords are moving over your windpipe to close off the airway. Now this is all going on at the same time in this pharyngeal stage. So the food is now moving through the throat. It's getting now to the muscle that is at the top of the esophagus. And that muscle now is starting to relax. This is all happening simultaneously. Amazing. Amazing. Okay, the very last stage of the swallow is called the esophageal stage. And that stage begins as, as the muscle at the top of the esophagus is opening up and the food is starting to pass from the throat into the esophagus. And now it's heading for the stomach. S the amount of time that it takes the food to travel from the muscle at the top of the esophagus into the stomach can be anywhere from 8 to 20 seconds. So what are the problems specifically that people with MS experience in those four stages of swallowing? Are there, is there one stage that's bigger than the other? Most of the problems we see um, are problems in the throat stage. Although because of, you can have lesions in a variety of places, um, you can see problems in all the stages um, with the exception of the oral preparatory um, um, in MS. And we certainly have at our clinic. 
Um, the problems are problems of, you need, in order to swallow, you need really good um, coordination of timing, rate, respiration, pressure. Um, everything needs to go just right. Um, a split second can make a difference. And you, be, you need to be able to coordinate breathing and swallowing, which is a very, very important function. It's quite amazing that you, know, you take it for granted that, that that's something that's so easy and that if part of the system gets knocked off on how much it can really affect people. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, the, the uh, concern that we have when it comes to swallowing problems is that um, many of us have had this experience about when something goes down the wrong pipe and you swallow it and actually food is either penetrating the airway or it actually goes into the airway and what our body naturally does is because the lungs are very unhappy when anything gets in, in the airway is we cough and we cough sometimes very violently and prolonged and our face gets red and, and that's actually a very good thing. That's what I want to see if somebody's having a problem because the alternative to that is something that we call um, silent aspiration for which there are no symptoms where the food actually enters the airway and may go into the lungs and the person does not cough at all. So how can some of these issues be treated? Um, they can be treated. The first thing when before we look at treatment uh, we have to look at doing a really good uh, diagnostic eval. We usually recommend for all people to go and do a uh, either a modified barium swallow study um, which involves going into an x-ray um, uh, suite and actually looking at the swallow on moving video. So you mix barium in with different consistencies of food, um, thin, thick liquids, um, pudding like puree and then some type of a solid and we feed somebody and we actually watch them chew and swallow on a moving x-ray to see where the food goes, how the food goes, if it's getting caught up and then we also try doing different types of um, techniques, maneuvers, uh, these sorts of things to see if we can help facilitate uh, the food to go down uh, into the esophagus and stomach. So you use these measures to determine what best treatment for people yes. to have. So what are some of the treatments that you might suggest? Uh, one of the first things that I start with with people is their positioning. Okay. Um, how we position ourselves has everything to do with, you know, if you recall, I, I said respiration and swallowing, you know, breathing and swallowing are a big thing. And so how the pelvis sits in the chair actually stabilizes the rest of the muscles for the diaphragm and the muscles for both speech and swallowing. Sure. So um, when somebody's sitting in a chair, in a, for example, a wheelchair, I want to make sure they're not slumped to the side, they're not slumped back, and certainly I don't want to see them slumped over. One of the things I always ask people is, how do you take your medicines? Um, and I'm particularly watching for those, those folks who take their pills with the old dump and swallow where they're throwing their head back. Sure. People need to remember, when you throw your head back, um, you're opening up your airway. When we do CPR, that's what we do is we pull the, page, well, the person's right, head back. Right, it's more dangerous that that's way. That's right. It's actually more dangerous to throw your head back to take your pills. Right, right. Wow. Okay, so another thing that we may do is we may have somebody, um, for example, uh, sit in a certain position or posture. So um, they may do better if they turn their head uh, to the side and swallow. Mm -hmm. They may do better if they tuck their chin down and swallow. Uh, the Heimlich maneuver, which is something yes. that is kind of the universal therapy for everybody, yes. um, is that something that's used for people with MS who have issues? Well, the Heimlich maneuver is used for everybody. Okay. It, so, and, and I'm a big believer that everybody should know the Heimlich maneuver and CPR. So, Pat, how do MS patients manage some of their swallowing issues? Well, I think there's some very practical ways of managing um, swallowing problems. You know, one of the things is, is what I tell people, um, is you know be very conscious of the foods that give you difficulty and avoid those things. Um, the other thing is, is uh, in, in a clinical setting when we do an evaluation we may suggest that you change or modify certain um, consistencies. So for example you know, we may suggest you avoid um, hard meats. Okay. Um, another thing that people can do is be aware of their environment. Um, if it's very busy and very loud 
and people have a hard time concentrating and they need to concentrate on their swallow or they need to use a technique when they eat, um, they may need to find a quieter place um, to do their eating. Um, other recommendations um, that I give is that um, if people want to participate in a meal but yet they um, don't have the physical stamina to do an entire meal um, but they want to enjoy participating with their family is to take their nutrition at other times that, that's quieter where they have a little more time but then take just part of the meal with the family so it's slower, they can pace themselves but yet they can still enjoy the ambience of being in the group. Pat, thank you so much for such an informative look at swallowing. I definitely will never see it again in the same way. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, we invite you to check out the program on speech problems that, that Ms. Bednarik also participated in. Finally, if you would like to learn about other MS symptoms or to get more information on living with MS, go to www.nationalmssociety.org. This is Kate Milliken for MS Learn Online. Thank you for joining us.